Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Florencio Files. It's been a hot minute, but only have been furnished with a couple of lovely Florencio replays. In the top right, we've got himself playing on his Dankcraft account up against Sha. Now, Sha's open with the good luck, have fun there. Good piece of manners. Interestingly enough, Florencio has not responded. Maybe uh, he's probably just reading his stream chat. Let's be real. I've had people actually come up to me at events and be like, oh, man. Why do you never good luck have fun me? And I'm like, don't I? Oh my god, I'm sorry, dude. I, I just sometimes I'm staring at Twitch. I've had people ask me like five questions in chat at the start of the game. And they've wondered why I haven't responded. And sometimes as a streamer, you're just looking at your second monitor at your Twitch chat, talking to other people. You don't even notice what's going on. It's also the number one excuse uh, when you die to cheese inevitably as well is, oh, oh Twitch chat distracted me. <laughs> so it's, it goes two ways. Uh, now, for those who don't know, Florencio is one of the cheesiest players out there. He's, he's a dirty, dirty uh, boy. He's going to open up with a proxy barracks here. This is actually, for Florencio, a pretty well-timed proxy barracks. Went down about 47 seconds. Uh, obviously not the crazy fastest, but it'll do. He's got a second barracks at home, so maybe going to just do a two racks reaper and uh, hope the opponent scouts only one barracks and thinks it's a totally normal build. Now, the reason why that wouldn't work is if the SCV were to arrive, it would say, hey, why is your barracks 30 seconds behind mine? Like, <laughs> unless you're just incompetent at StarCraft, clearly you, you've already got another barrack somewhere else. Florencio, though, is being a dirty piece of shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. I just got here. The game started. Florencio, it's been a while since he dropped one of these, but this is the dirtiest form of psychological warfare. This is just filthy. So he's hoping that if the opponent came in sometime around then, He'd see the barracks is late, but then there'd be this, oh no, I just got here, I, 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 I'm, oh, I missed the first 30, 40 seconds of the game, that's why my barracks is late, that's why my build is late. Obviously, all to lull his opponent into a false sense of security. Shah, though, is having none of it. Shah is just doing a super solid opening here, has a Reaper, second Reaper, factor in the way. This is a very solid build. Unfortunately for Shah, though, no scouting for proxies. Normally, I like to send my Reaper out this way and check for proxy barracks for Reaper on that path. Shah's just going to go straight across the middle of the map, so this could get messy very quickly. Uh, if Shah starts building extra Hellions and Reapers, that would be good, but notice they're rallied across the map. Oh, that's a dangerous rally. Just rallying across the map like that? Oh, this could get really nasty. Florencio's Reaper moves out. Shah's Reaper moves in, so Shah's actually going to get the jump on him here. Shah's going to get into the base and start damaging the SCVs. There is another Reaper about to pop, but it's about to pop on the other side of the map. There's nothing building from this barracks right now. Oh, no. And Shah with some slick micro is like, yep. Uh, oh my god, wait, wait, wait. What if Shah buys the story, though? Because he's like, why don't you have any units? Oh, you must have been AFK for the first minute in the game. Florencio is going to counterattack with three Reapers right now. And even though this one Reaper's already killed two SCVs and damaged a lot more, three Reapers do way more damage than that. They're going to start doing heaps. Shah needs to desperately be building more Hellions and Reapers at home. But he's so focused on microing at the front. And he thinks that's going to win in the game. He hasn't looked at home. We're going to go Shah's camera. Shah's not watching. Shah has not looked at home once. Shah has still not attack moved SCVs. He's just queued up more Hellions and Reapers using his control groups. Shah thinks they're winning this game. They're like, cool, this, this dude was AFK. I can't believe this is working. Oh my God, he finally looks at home, but there's only five SCVs left. If he A moved those SCVs, that would have been way harder for Florencio to micro. He would have had to do a lot more starter set. Let's go back to everyone's camera. Now he loses every single SCV. That Hellion could easily get 3v1 as well. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Now, Flow does come in with a Reaper, but that's only one Reaper. Even with the SCVs versing three, I think Shah should be able to win that fight. Ooh, gets the Reaper with nice focus fire, and those SCVs getting hammered. Hellion's coming across the map right now as well. Florencio's at six SCVs. Shah's only at one. But Shah has more units. Equal Reaper count and two Hellions is a much better army. These SCVs trying to hide. Shah. Oh, Shah sees him. Shah sees him. Go get him, Shah. Oh, okay. Here we go. Four. Oh, oh. There's only three Reapers here for Shah. Florencio, can he get one? Florencio gets one. If he get another one, that would be great. Florencio's going to chase him down. Shah turning to fight while his Reapers are damaged. Bad call for Shah. Bad call for Shah. Very good fight for Florencio. Is it, though? Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. If, if the Reaper could jump in there and kill that, that'd be great. Oh, he gets it. Nicely done. But the SCV does answer and takes the Reaper out, which means, guess what? The Hellion can't get past the wall. It can't jump up cliffs. Florencio is able to drop double mule. Meanwhile, Shah also drops double mule though. Okay, so both sides dropping mules right now. It's going to be two Reapers and a Hellion building for Florencio, who for some reason has proxied a factory on the left side of the map. This game is in absolute shambles at this point. I wonder if Shah realizes that they were tricked at the start of this game, because I would be a little mad if I realized that was the case. Either way, it's reset. Definitely needs to drop more mules, does Shah. Shah's only got two SCVs. Florencio has three so Florencio is about half an SCV or so ahead on the production there. He goes to four SCVs. 
Uh, Reaper could get some damage done. Remember, Reapers can heal themselves. Hellions cannot. So the Reaper should have just stood and fought for a bit longer. It shoots way faster than the Hellion and then pulled back after taking one more shot. Florencio, though, being very cautious. He doesn't want to take any more damage. Now, Shah has not changed the rally point. It's from the other side of the map. It's still just rallying to the other side of the map. Zero caution. Wait, does Shah, Shah still doesn't realize there's a proxy. Shah still does not realize there's a proxy. Oh no, Shah. <laughs> Shah is still, this win is purely on Florencio's misdirection at the start. Assuming he wins, which is still, to be fair, in doubt. Um, more Reaper Hellion comes out. At, oh, actually, this is this is isolated. Shah's going to trap this. He's got two Re a Reaper Hellion, a Reaper Hellion. He could jump on this. Another Hellion coming back from there. He might not even lose a unit. If he if he lowers the depots and comes in from all sides, ooh, his Hellion does get focused by. Good focus by Florencio. Can he finish that Hellion? No! Oh my god, and Flo's gonna lose that Reaper as well! Dude, if Shah just pulls these back and repairs these Hellions, he's good. Every unit matters so much in this scenario. To not repair these Hellions when you've only got seven SCVs is a little bit crazy. But he's gonna find the proxy barracks. Doesn't know about the factory, though, which is now lifted off and landed in his main. Florencio... Is that 10 SCV? Shah is at 8. They're both building workers. Shah's building more Hellions, rallying them at home. But Shah, I really... Oh, man. I feel like Shah could just run across the map and overwhelm. The problem is, of course, that these Hellions will come in and roast because he doesn't have vision of that corner of his main base. This is disgusting. And don't get me wrong, guys. This is dirty tricks, what Florencio does. Now, I'm sure there's someone in the comments already who's like, well, don't, don't promote this filth. What can I say? It is filthy, guys. Florencio is the one that has to wake up in the morning with the smell of sewage. And if you do the same sort of thing, you will as well. Now, on the other hand, this is a lesson to all of us. Once again, whenever anyone says anything in the game, until you have them uh, on the chopping block, so to speak, don't trust anything they say in a game of StarCraft. They're almost always lying to try and distract you. Florencio trying to turtle up with bunkers. He's trying to build marauders. He's got another bunker in the mineral line. If, if, oh my god, the depot is buying him very valuable time. This depot is buying him enough time. Shah has a much better army right now, but the bunker gets up and with mass repair. Might be able to... I mean, it's only got one Reaper in it, which kind of sucks, but that Reaper's deep in the red. Finally, the Hellion's ready to show themselves. Florencio goes in with these three Hellions. He's going to roast and toast the economy there. Marauder is out. Oh god, Florencio needs to get that marauder in the bunker right now. Oh my god, oh my god, oh, but, but actually, these Hellions were in range of the bunker. Another Reaper goes down there, and a Hellion there. Oh man, what a mess. This is an absolute mess. The SCVs are getting killed at home. Shah goes for the Marauder. Oh, the Marauder gets in the bunker with like two hit points left. Another Reaper goes down. Shah has just lost so many Reapers and Hellions. Now, if Shah just builds a Banshee out of this, Shah can still win this game. I, I really do believe that. Just start building a Banshee, because I don't think that'll kill the Starport before it finishes. Oh, lifts it though. Uh, I mean... But the problem here is once these depots go down, you can't build extra units. Shah needs to make sure they, they spend the rest of that money to build units right now. They still have an army that's decent, but it's equal Hellion count. They're up two Reapers, but there's two Marauders. I think the Marauders are the stronger unit. I like the way the Barracks is swapping with the factory. Builds a Marauder, then swaps it again and starts building a Cyclone. These Hellions and Reapers need to move around and deny this mining. He's letting Florencio mine gas right now. Should be even just hitting the command center, you'll eventually take it down, but you can't be just got to use hold position here, Shah. Yeah, hold position or focus fire. Just keep those units out of range. Ooh, ooh, the Marauder's going to kill some stuff if you're not careful. The Marauder and the Reaper do take out uh, an enemy Reaper. Shah losing a Reaper there. I mean, yes, you're shutting down the mining, but you got to pull these units back. Almost loses a Hellion as well. Those two Reapers will regenerate. These units are valuable. Remember, though. Look at this, 10 out of 15 supply. Shah still could plant the starport, build a tech lab, and make a banshee. And would that on its own be enough? No, but he could actually afford cloak as well. And that would be game winning. Because look, there's, the command center is going to be lifted. There's only one cyclone anyway. So you can usually activate the scan and get out of it before it goes down. But oh no, he's going to lose the command center. And that's all of his supply, which means Shah won't be able to spend all this money. Shah, start building units right now. Viking, Hellion, anything you can. You got to spend that money before the command center goes down. Shah does force Florencio's command center lift, but Florencio still has the command center up. Oh my God, Shah, please build something. Okay, Shah's going to start a liber... Wait, a liberator? No! No, that's the most expensive unit you could build. And now the tech lab's going to finish on the factory, but can't build anything out of it. Cancel that. Build a Viking. Build a Viking, mate. A landed Viking would be better than a Liberator in this scenario. I mean, a Liberator can... Uh, maybe? Maybe it could do some really good stuff. Florencio has two Hellions queued up that he's going to try and build. So he's got a Marauder, a Cyclone, four Hellions, and he's still got the bunker at home with a Marauder and a Reaper in it. Drops a mule, starts repairing his barracks. He's going to try and build a tech lab and get more Marauders out by the looks of it. Of course, he'll need to build new depots. Now, Shah's still going, where's the command center? Where's the command center? It's like, dude, he just, he literally landed it where it lifted off from before. 
Oh man, and Florencio could go for the base trade because he sees there's only a few buildings. They're all revealed. You get vision when your opponent doesn't have a command center, a nexus, or a hatchery. All of those buildings are revealed. Now, if Shah, oh Shah can just siege the lib there, bust the bunker with the four Hellions and the two Reapers, which I do think they can overwhelm that bunker and then be good. But the Liberator sieges on the command center. Oh no, Shah! What are you doing, buddy? The Liberator could have zoned those units out on the ramp. Oh no, the Cyclone Lock for Florencio is massive. He pulls out of range there. The bunker is going to start picking these guys off. The Marauder comes forward. Shah even attacks the rocks on the low ground. Oh my god, Shah was in utter shambles. And that there is the power of being a person with no morals, no ethics. And uh, who basically just feels comfortable lying to their opponent to get those filthy sewer victories. Well done, Florencio. You truly are a filth lord. All right, and going to another TVT, which I actually think is one of the best matchups for Florencio to work his dirty, foul, foul pieces of... Uh, I don't know why misogyny was the word popping into my head. That's definitely not the right word. Uh, my limited vocabulary once again strikes again. But working his dark magic, his dark arts, it is YouTuber. Looks like that's uh, one of his new names. Uh, learning from the great YouTube man himself, Uthermal, perhaps. In the top left, we've got Deer Park. Now, I've heard about... I'm actually going to go to Japan on a, on, a, on a holiday, vacation, as you guys call it in America, uh, later this year. Uh, I hear they have deer parks there. I've never been to a deer park, but isn't that like where like there's just deer everywhere and they come and eat out of your hand and everything? Sounds like a fun time. I imagine that's what deer park means and refers to. I uh, remember seeing videos of this many years ago. We'll see, though. Uh, if this is going to be anywhere near as cute and friendly. Earlier CV scout up against what appears to be a gas first into barracks. And are we going to depot wall off? No, he's going for his own scout by the looks of it. Okay, so Flo's going to move out with his own SCV scout. Double gas here. And it looks like Deer Park is actually going to be the one who's walling off first. Saying, how dare you try to get inside my base. Now, Florencio, that SCV is on a bit of a weird path. Okay, now nah, he's proxying. He's already going for a proxy, the little filth lord. Uh, SCV is going to tag onto this SCV as it does a little loop-de-loop -loop of the main base. And it looks like we're going to see some one base versus one base TVT action to kick us off. Orbital going down there for Deer Park, a reasonably tight build order. Florencio starts another SCV and a Marine. So no Orbital Command Center for Florencio. Back to his planetary ways, perhaps. We'll find out. Factory goes up in the top side of the map. So he's going to proxy a factory. Probably try and float that in the corner and do that same Hellion move from the last game. Deer Park going for a defensive factory. Actually rallying Marines over there because he's worried about Reapers jumping in. And that's kind of handy because that means the Marines could see the factory floating in if he chooses to do that. On the other hand, he could build a tech lab and rally tanks in. And that would be kind of devastating as well. Deer Park's checking everywhere for hidden bases. Look at this. He's even checking the gold base. And an orbital command center goes up for Florencio. Only about 20 to 30 seconds late on that, which is incredibly quick for Florencio. As Florencio's build orders, we often make fun of Dark's build orders for being a bit weird, not, not the most optimized. Uh, Florencio's build orders, well, if Dark's builds are unoptimized, Florencio's build orders are uh, literally like watching a drunk person fall downstairs. And you guys know it's kind of horrific at first, but then you realize that because they're drunk, they're relaxed, and their body's so floppy, and they just get up at the bottom, and they're not hurt at all. Like a few bruises, maybe a few cuts, but they're never seriously injured, whereas the same fall on a sober person would always seriously injure them, right? That's Florencio with his builds. So you look at it and you're like, oh no, wait, wait, did he float in by the way? Oh, he did, he lifted it in, floated in, saw the Marines and then floated back and built a tech line. <laughs> like a drunk person, he just goes, oh, this is not good. You see my factory, turns around, builds a tech lab, starts a stuff. He's like, yeah, we go to plan B, no worries, man. Building an armory behind it as well. And uh, yeah, the master of falling down steps. This might be one of Florencio's new titles, you know, not just the king of cheese, but the master of falling down steps. I, I feel like that's an impressive title. Now, Deer Park's going tank, a medevac, and more marines behind this. And uh, Florencio's done a supply drop there. He's building a Thor. Thor is here. He's going to be going for a Thor and a medevac. So he's going to do a Thor drop. Now, dude, if Deer Park built like a cyclone, I mean, one tank is good, but I think one on siege tank plus a bunch of marines. And then just have a Viking and a Cyclone to shoot down the medevac. And, and there's nothing this can do to you. But Deer Park basically has no anti-air. Like the Marines, yes, they're anti-air. But medevac can so easily outposition that. So Florencio could go around. On the other hand, he's going to go for a drop. Deer Park is going for what appears to be a little little drippy drop. Nope. He's going to boost. Nope. Where? Interesting decision. Deer Park. 
Oh, it's a four marine single tank drop. There's a Thor there. If that Thor swaps into high impact payload, it can shoot down a medevac very quickly, but the drops are going to shoot past each other. Deerfar quickly runs backwards and tries to counter the drop with their own drop. Oh, no, the tank. Get the tank out of there. Oh, 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 good pickup, actually. Deerfark should just pull some SCVs over to repair. Already so much damage on that Thor, but... Oh, no, 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 why are you dropping? Pull back! Pull back, Deerfark! Oh, my God, Deerfark throws the tank away. On the other hand, Florencio is still shooting the crappy Javelin missiles, the, the splash damage mode, out of the Thor. He should be using the high-impact payload that actually does heaps of damage to the medevac. He could kill that thing in two more shots, but instead he's on the really bad mode right now. The Thor's going to drop in the back, though. That could do some real nice damage. Gets one SCV... And, oh no, he swaps into that splash damage mode again. He's doing no damage. Swap into single fire, please. He's taking out the Marines and the SCVs pretty quickly. Oh my god, it's so bad. <laughs> He's doing 20 damage a shot and he shoots so slowly. This Thor is wasting so much time attacking Metavax right now. It's insane. Okay, SCVs are taking damage. The Marines are going down as well. Oh, that's a lot. The, the tank finally moves over. And with the Viking as well, you've got to be careful here as Florencio. He tries to drop on the tank but with the SCV surround and the Viking overhead, not to mention the splash damage mode shooting the Viking. Oh, it gets held. The medevac gets shot down. Florencio has been pushed back, but he's got a battle cruiser behind it. Oh, he's going to the next wave. And of course, the one base four barracks transition. Because like I said, falling down the steps, guys. Florencio is the guy who, who, in a gymnastics competition, literally just bites the curb. He just falls face forward, bites the curb, and they're like, 10 out of 10, beautiful. And you're like, huh? Why? It's not beautiful, though. It's bad. And he's like, bad is a state of mind, man. And I'm like, oh, no, it's objectively bad. Please stop. Viking's going to land over here and deal with the factory, but guess what? He doesn't know that the starport's over there. Oh, so Deer Park's going to waste some Florence here. Just wants to keep him occupied here and then surprise him with the battle cruisers. If that starport got on a reactor, it would be so much better if he brought that down here and put it on the reactor and started pumping Vikings two at a time. But instead, he's building one at a time out of the tech lab. Now, Deer Park's still ahead. He could, he could drop mules, make another orbital. Could be in a really good spot, but not knowing that it's BCs is a big problem. If you know it's BCs, you'd be like, cool, second starport, start pumping Vikings, keep building tanks on the ground. No way to lose this game. But look at the way Florencio is lifting the factory land to get moving these widow mines around there's an armory so you'd have to scan to take it out and now look at that free viking kill sets up for the free viking kill the widow mines are going to try and move forward to support the bc if he can lure vikings into the widow mines that would be massive the vikings are pulling back he's got some scvs to repair does deer park but deer park needs to be building more of those has a cyclone coming which will help a lot siege tank does get a bit exposed the marines coming forward to support the vikings will push back these units uh oh he's trying to bait him to the widow mines he's trying to bait the vikings remember cyclone gets one shot watch out deer park oh does deer park know deer park knows Deer Park realizes the Widow Mines are there, shoots them down with a scan. Very well done by Deer Park. And the Vikings can now cause a lot of problems for Mr. YouTuber. Battlecruiser is going to have to teleport home to heal up. Uh, 23 SCVs versus 26. Looks like the Vikings going to go after that factory one more time. Could potentially kill it. Second BC is going to be out in about 30 seconds. Uh, this is still looking like an advantage for Deer Park. But I've got to say the psychological damage of dealing with such a weird scenario... We've seen it kill uh, many greater Terrans before. And right now, the Starport's still not on a reactor. Unupgraded Marines are one of the most useless units versus Battlecruisers and Widow Mines. Battlecruisers and Widow Mines kind of... Uh, they, they kind of hard counter Marines. And that Widow Mine getting hit on the Viking. Remember, the Battlecruisers are the real threat. You don't want to waste time attacking this factory. But this factory right now, it's like a magnet. It's an idiot magnet. It's luring all of Deer Park's attention out here. And it's such a big problem. Look at that. Battlecruiser comes forward, picks off a Viking on its own. BC down the left flank, BC down the right. The BC teleported home never repaired itself. Can you believe it? <laughs> Only Florencio would not have done that. Now this BC on the top, its teleport comes off cooldown. So it, it's able to get out of there. This guy's going to fly in. Oh no, nine seconds till teleport's ready. If that cyclone locks and the Vikings hit it, it could go down. This is a big problem. Oh, he's going to Yamato the cyclone. Oh no, Yamato's a tank actually. I don't know if that was the right call. Oh, teleport barely in time. Florencio has not lost a battle cruiser yet. The unit's lost time starting to go way in his favor, and he even builds a command center on his natural. Stim has not been made, but he's starting to make four marines at a time. Is Florencio is thinking about Stim as a follow-up? Now, funnily enough, right, you're building cyclones and vikings to counter the BCs. Stim marines, even without upgrades, are going to do perfectly fine. In fact, they're going to do fantastically against unupgraded. I mean, even upgraded cyclones and vikings just aren't going to do good there yet. Stim starts up. Oh my god, this is such a dumb transition. Because if the other player isn't in shambles, it just has a few tanks sieged, these marines, they're not going to have engineering bay upgrades. You don't have much mineral income, so you can't really support a lot of marines. It's going to be like one surprise wave and that's it. 
probably not going to have combat shields. You definitely can't have it for at least a few more minutes. Like, this is not a sustainable attack. It's a, I hope I catch you with nothing but those units. And for some reason, high sec auto tracking is being upgraded by Deer Park. Deer Park was some of the worst prioritizations I've ever seen. You know your opponent's doing nothing but building battle cruisers and widow mines, and you're like, I'll just build one Viking at a time, and we'll make high sec auto tracking and make turrets. Silver League turrets. Why are you making Silver League turrets behind your natural? Oh my god. The battle cruiser is the most mobile unit in the game when you account for its teleport. Static defense does not block it. Static defense is a tiny bonus piece to help you survive a little bit or protect a mineral line. It is not the whole defense. Okay, there's still two tanks, but Deer Park's just F2 A moving the army back and forth. Still has a depot raised, making this movement really awkward. Needs to siege the tanks to deal with these marines. Needs to siege the tanks. This is what I was talking about. The marines come in. Stim is not ready, though. The Vikings seem to be doing all right, but Yamato takes out two of them. Three Vikings gone. There's three Cyclones left, but the Cyclones, I don't think they're locking onto the right units. The Cyclone goes down. Another Cyclone goes down. Oh, no. Another Cyclone goes. Deer Park. Deer Park. If the tanks were just sieged, they could have dealt with the marines. The Cyclones and everything, and Vikings could have moved in and out and tried to do what they needed to. Now let's see if these eight range missile turrets get the job done. There's none covering the production of the main. The BCs can fly right on in there. Oh, this is a disaster. Cyclone also locks onto the wrong unit, but it's a magfield cyclone, so it does 800 damage over 14 seconds. It does get broken there, that lock on, but the moment it can do another one, it'll be good. Deer Park, no, don't rip it. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, Deer Park's in trouble. Oh, no, 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 but the turrets, it gets baited in. He gets baited in. Florencio gets baited in. The BC goes down. I'm actually cheering for Deer Park in this game because this bait is so abusive by Florencio. I want to at least see Deer Park fight back and force Florencio to show another wave. Oh, that BC doesn't get to teleport home. That's two, two BC kills from one Cyclone. Can he get number three? Three for three? Three for three? Dude, if he gets another one, that would be huge. There is no Yamato available. Teleport's ready. But is Florencio watching is the big question. Of course Florencio is watching. That guy loves to micro his units. And that one will teleport, well, not really home, but just randomly on the map. It's going to take a while to get that back in repair. But a second BC, or I guess he lost two of them, right? So this is BC number four, has popped out. There's only five Marines and two BCs. Deer Park still has way more workers, but Deer Park is trying to build two engineering bays. What? How is that? What you... No, build starports and Vikings. I get you don't have gas. Quickly, put on gas. Put on gas. Take gases. <laughs> and build turrets around the main, I guess. But the engineering bay died, so we can't build turrets with the minerals. Which means the BC gets rid of the cyclone. And the cyclone was the only anti-air. Oh, and it's supply blocked as well. <gasps> oh, dear fuck. The moment... Okay, this is a hot tip for anyone out there who struggles with BCs, guys. Real real simple set piece. Maybe your opponent builds one BC. Maybe they keep building BCs one at a time. The biggest priority as a Terran is to get your starport onto a reactor and just never stop building Vikings. You can build four Vikings a minute and four Vikings kind of kick the crap out of a BC with some micro. And as the number scales, the fight gets better and better for you as the Viking player. You can then just do normal stuff. Build Marines, tanks, whatever you want with everything else. Yeah, you don't have medevacs to heal your Marines. That kind of sucks. But you don't want to be relying on Cyclones because they're so fragile and microable. They're good for the initial defense. You might build one or two, maybe even get three with Magfield. But you need to be building Vikings two at a time. You can't be just building Vikings one at a time and having all the breaks in production like Deer Park has had here. It's it's painful to watch. And another command said, no, put on gas. Put on gas, Deer Park. The thing is, in TVT, it's, it's, when you're thrown into a situation like this, you don't play very often. It's so hard to know what to do. And you're like, ah. And the priority is, it's got to be get the Vikings up to deal with the BC, then focus on the ground army to, to deal with the other stuff. And, uh, and then just keep macroing in whatever your normal game plan is. But I'm not sure, with the Silver League turrets we saw behind the natural, I'm not sure if Deer Park has the greatest game plan. Viking, you can see on its own, a single Viking doesn't do great versus a BC. Kind of hits the edge of the map here. It doesn't have space to micro, but finally the second starport comes up. If you're in desperate spot and they're doing nothing but building BCs, nothing wrong with building, you know, four gases, two extra starports, and building four Vikings at a time. Don't even bother getting add-ons on these extra ones. Could work. Cyclone's finally going to push this back. Man, Florencio's macro usually sucks, so this game might not actually be over. Florencio has a Widow Mine there. He's got a few Marines and a BC. But, I mean, Deer Park could even aim move SCVs to deal with the Marines, or at least some of them. And you got, what, more Cyclones and more Vikings on the way. I mean, I think he's going to have enough to deal with a few BCs, but there's four BCs. I mean, the army supply is out of control. 46 to 16. I think Deer Park might have just taken too much damage. As long as Florencio keeps going. He's got gas mining on his natural. He's got a third building, so he is macroing up, even though it's slow. He's going to Yamato down the... Oh, he gets a Cyclone. Yeah, that's the big damage dealer. It has such high damage. 
but uh, it's just so vulnerable. And these missile turrets all not quite able to finish. New Cyclone comes out, though. New Cyclone forces the teleport home, and another BC comes in ready for these Yamatos. That command center will go down. I wouldn't mind a planetary morphing here. Anything to try and buy time, but unable to even get enough anti-air up. Oh, he misclicked his Yamato in the command center. Florencio is getting counterattacked by Marine Tank right now. Runs his SCVs away. Marine and the tank. They kill one or two SCVs, force a bit of lost mining time. They do force a teleport home, so it's kind of a good move for buying yourself time. But Deer Park needs to get SCVs back on gas in the main and really get that Viking count up and then maybe squeeze a tank in. If I was Deer Park, I'd build a siege tank only now on the factory and then nothing but uh, those units. Missile turrets are not the answer. Oh, man. Oh, man. And missile turrets is like, well, if he flies into these missile turrets, we got it. It's like, it's what if he finds, he just flies in here and kills you two gases? You're like, oh, well, I lose all my, you know, half of my gas income and the turrets do nothing about it. Don't get me wrong, turrets aren't the worst thing. There's always people who, it's, number one rookie mistake is just building lots of static defense, right? And it's not that static defense is bad. It's just that it's lower priority, right? I'm sure there's a lot of new players, people who barely play. Like, well, why aren't they good? Aren't they for anti -air? The thing is, you can't just rely on static defense. It's it's bonus. It's ancillary. It is it's 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 it's, it's extra stuff. You know, you can't just build a trench and expect yourself to win a warfare because then you'd need trenches to cover absolutely every single bit of the battlefield. It's not viable. It's not smart. You spend so much time building entrenchments, and then your opponent just moves their whole army to a, a battlefield that you didn't expect them to be at, and you're like, ah. Oh. Well, we put all of our investment in digging holes in the ground, and those holes aren't where we need them to be. Like, it's just mobility is kind of important. Um, you know, it, it might be a little piece of why the, the Golden Horde was so goddamn effective when the Mongols basically took over the world. They could just move so much faster than everybody else, choose where and when the battlefields were. Regularly, they did the old, oh no, you beat us, and pretend to break up and flee and run away screaming. Enemy would break formation, charge after them, and realize uh, only after the fact that they charged into a completely organized ambush. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like Florencio right now is the rampaging horseman. He's coming here, so lock up your wives, lock up your daughters, lock up your SCVs, because he's coming for your drilly boys, and he wants to take your soul. For some reason, there's a cloaked ghost, but I think he's forgotten to make a nuke this game. I guess his factory died. Oh, yep, he's trying to make nukes. He's realized he doesn't have a factory, so he's building a new factory. Oh, no, the Vikings are landed. Oh, my God, Deer Park, so many times in this game, has been lured out by the proxy buildings. Oh no, you had Static D, you had a Planetary, you had a lot of Vikings. You actually maybe had a fighting chance in this game because Florencio doesn't upgrade nor transition. <laughs> and Deerbug's like, oh, this is the star, but even tried to build a turret next to it. Oh no, oh. I do feel a little bit like at this point, I don't know if you can see it. Some of you may just see blue uh, battle cruisers flying over a red command center, red SCVs, red siege tank. What I see right now is a, a beautiful man living over there in California. A mad shit-eating grin on his face. He, he does have a bit of a slimy tail covered in some uh, some effluent from the sewers. And I do feel just a little bit like he may actually... Yeah. Oh, what is that? Yeah, those are... Is that, a, is that a car battery? And are those two clamps? And he's attaching them to the nipples of his... Oh, okay. He's attaching them to the nipples of the victim and applying full shock. Yeah, yeah. It's Florencio doing Florencio things as he continues to kill everything. Let's do a quick shout out to everyone who's been supporting the Patreon. A massive thanks to all of you. A special thanks to Jacob G, our Leviathan, Maxan, our conductor of the Dicktown Express, and of course, everybody else. If you guys enjoy the show, you want to go above and beyond to support, please do consider checking out the Patreon. It is down below in the description. And uh, a big thanks for everyone who's kind of popped on and, and, and taken advantage of that and, and actually helped support the channel and keep it going. Even when YouTube ad money goes down or they, they, they rip us off or this or that or, or whatever goes on. Um, thankfully, we've had a lot of people, even if you can't afford support, they're just hanging out watching the channel and watching this sick madman beard, the disgusting... Uh, guy that he is is uh, is in itself something quite good now the reason i stayed in this i wanted to see if he was going to use the nukes but let's let's see fast forward no is he not nuking florencio he just leaves he forgot he made two nukes all of that all that build up and he forgets about the nukes either way gg well played florencio there the thor drop uh just devastating the opponent the follow-up battle cruise is completely unsuspecting and sowing chaos into the matrix thanks for watching guys see you in the next one goodbye and good night